Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. So in this video, I'm going to cover the different data types in Ruby. This is a great video to watch if you're new to programming or you're just trying to learn more about Ruby and see how the programming language works. So I'm just going to describe all of the major data types in Ruby. So yeah, it's going to be a pretty interesting video. It's not that long. I'm just going to go over the different types and that's it. But I hope you guys are excited, and I'm going to be posting a lot of new videos soon. So stay tuned, and I'll try to be really consistent, because now I have a whole new setup, and it's perfect for creating videos. So with that being said, let's get right into the video. Alright, let's learn to use the Ruby programming language. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up... Let me open up Visual Studio Code Editor. And I'm going to just create a new folder where we can store all of our Ruby code. So you could just go and, well, up here we can do Open Folder. And we're going to have to actually create a new folder. So you can choose wherever you want this to be. But you just want to right click over here and go down to New and create a new folder and this is where we're going to store all of our code for this video and then we can just select that folder as the one we're going to open in VS Code and then it will give us a little prompt if asking do you trust the authors and yes we do because that's us and now that we're inside of this folder we can create our first Ruby file so I'm just going to create a new file and let's call it like hello YouTube. And then every Ruby file has to end with a with an extension of .rb to specify that this is a Ruby file. So then we can save that. And right in here, we're in our first Ruby file. So if we just want to simply print a message, we can. Uh, write puts and then pass in a string which in Ruby a string is anything like any text that is enclosed in these two quotes and it can also be single quotes so this is a string and this is a string but what we can do is we can print that to the console and then to run this code we can go over here and we can run it in the console. So I have this extension, run code. You don't have that at first, but you can go and search up, we'll go over to the extensions and search up code runner. And this is the extension that allows you to run any type of code, which actually they support a lot of different languages. Now that you have that extension, uh, it gives you this option when you right click on the file to run the code. So I just did that, I right clicked and I pressed run code. And then as you can see, it ran the code and it printed out this message. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the types of data. Now they have these in basically all programming languages. They classify their data into different types and they have a name for it. But I'm gonna show you the data types uh, for Ruby. So first of all, to write a comment in Ruby, you can use this pound sign. And anything that is after this pound sign is going to be commented out, and it won't be run in Ruby code. So I'm just going to use that to write the names of these different data types, just so you can see. So the first type of data is a string. Now a string is anything, any type of text that's surrounded by these quotes. So like this would be a string, uh, and then a longer kind of piece of text. This would also be a string. And also with single quotes, these are strings too. So that's a string, right? You can, it's just like some text really. Uh, Oh, and then that kind of leads me to symbols. So a symbol is kind of like a string, except for it's not. It's actually 
using this colon and it would just be like a key like this that's really all a symbol is it doesn't get more complicated than that but the difference between a string and a symbol is a symbol I think it only has like one of its kind so so that like this would always be the same thing but a string has different instances so like if you did <clears throat> if you assign this to a variable string one equals this and then you just did another one string one well let's actually run this and see so let's just print this out so it's string one equals string two and let's go ahead and run the code oh it says true <laughs> wait so maybe I'm getting this wrong but this is a pretty big question in the like I've heard this in coding interviews for example A string in Ruby is a mutable series of characters or bytes. Symbols, on the other hand, are immutable values. Got it. So maybe what I meant to do is like... If we just compare two strings run the code now it's still true because they are they are exactly the same I don't know what I was saying okay but these are strings these are symbols now to set a variable it's pretty easy so we could just say like whatever our name of our variable is going to be and then you add the equal sign you say it's going to equal and then you set the string so we could just have like our message to YouTube right so this is how you set a variable is you just put what the name of the variable is and then you do the equal sign and you can set it to anything so this can be any type of data it could be a string or it could be this YouTube thing too So I'm just calling my variable hello symbol and I'm setting it to this. And then if you see we can print out the, the the variable and it should just print out that value. And let's also print out the message. And then if we go and run this code again, we look in the console. Um hmm. I actually didn't see it. Let's try to run it again. Oh yeah, so it did work. Our message to YouTube. And then see it's printing a symbol. Hello symbol. So yeah, this is really cool. This is how you can set a variable. And it, as, as I was saying, it could be any type of data. It doesn't matter. It just means that you're setting a reference to this. So like message equals this string. And now you're, whatever this was, it's now stored on the variable. So we, we can say like message what happens if we say message to equals message, right? That's kind of interesting. So is message to going to be different or is it going to be the same? Let's run the code. And no, actually message and message to are both the same. But if we wanted to somehow like edit message to, so you can edit a string in a few, you can edit it in a lot of ways, but one way to edit it is to like, replace a certain character. So you can use this, um, these brackets syntax to target a certain character. And I'm just going to do zero, which in programming zero is always like the first index. So we're going to try to target this first character on here and we'll just say like, instead of R, it's going to be like your. So yo, I'm going to replace O. And then now let's run the code and we'll see, if, are these messages different? Or are they the same? Okay, so you see, yeah, we, our message is different. <clears throat> but one thing I see is I'm changing this uh, after I put the message. So I just want to move it to before I print the message and just make sure that 
message two is not affecting the regular message. Just to show you. Oh, that's weird. Was it a typo? No. Oh. That's kind of interesting. So changing the text on the second variable actually changed both. Which means that setting a variable it's all it's doing is setting a reference to the original variable. So when I change this second one, it updates both. Now that's something that I didn't know. That's actually something that I didn't know. So if we wanted to make it not um, cause look, we're just setting it to the first variable. I was thinking like, does that just clone it? Does that, what does that do? But apparently it just makes it literally the same as the first one. And anything that you do on the second one, it'll also do to the first variable. But if we do want to just have the message to be separate, well, we could just take the, the string and we could set it like our own string here. So see, instead of using the variable, we're just resetting the string that we were setting over there. And then now if we run the code, uh, we'll see that we get two different messages because we're no longer having a reference to that first variable. That's kind of interesting to think about. All right, now I want to move on to the next type of data, which I'm going to talk about arrays. So an array is a way to store a list of data and what that looks like in Ruby is it uses this bracket syntax so it's just like a bracket like this and then you can fill it with items which could be any type of data so it could be a string it could be a symbol I guess for us we could just do oh and it could also be a variable so see we could add our variables from up here into our array just like this And then right here, this is our first array, and we can also set this to a variable. I'm just going to call it our array, like our first array. You can call it anything. And then I'm going to just print out uh, this array. So if I run the code, uh, we see, well, this is what happens when you print an array instead of a string. You'll see that it prints it on different lines. So it prints out the first one, which is our message, then it prints the symbol, and then it also prints our more text. So it's kind of cool. An array can have any type of data in it. it there's not really any any rules, any strict rules. On like arrays must all have the same type of data. It's not like that. Ruby is pretty relaxed on how it's built with that type of stuff. And also, if you didn't know, Ruby is a dynamic language, which means uh, there's no typing or anything. So that's why a variable Maybe in some of like older programming languages, you would actually say like, this is a string, and then it would have to be like this variable has to be known as it's a type of string. But in Ruby, it's all dynamic, so a message could be a string, or it could be an array, or it could be any other type of data. So yeah, that's pretty cool, that's arrays. And then there's also a bunch of methods you can do on arrays like to filter out some of these things. To do something so if you did want to like let's say take out all the symbols you could do that and you could do a few other things but let's move on to the next type of data which is going to be a hash so a hash in Ruby is another way to store data except for instead of having it just in a list because an array just has it like from from the first element all the way to the last uh, in a hash it's actually ordered by key value pairs so to do that, it's actually a squiggly bracket. So you add a squiggly bracket, and then inside of here, you would set a key. So let's just say like a message key. And then you can set it also to any type of data. So we could even set this to the variable message is message. And then we could add some more, like a more text thing that just is like our additional info. And this could be anything. You could even have an array on here 
we could say like our array and then we'll set that up to our first array and this is just what you can do with a hash so it's more organized because you use a key instead of an index well it's kind of different there's different reasons why you'd use an array or a hash depending on the program that you're writing and we can also set this to a variable to like our hash and then let's print that out down here I'm just going to remove the puts for our array just so we can see the results from our hash. I'm going to run the code. Oh, and huh. Undefined method. We definitely did define the hash. I'm not sure if there's a glitch. I think there was some sort of glitch where I didn't save the code or something. But look at this. I reloaded, I ran the code, and uh, we see our hash. So we're getting printed out. All the different things, we see our message, more text, our array. And then to access any of the items on the hash, you actually use a symbol. I think you can use a string too. So you either use a symbol or a string. But you just pass in, you use the brackets like this to access. Almost like the same way how we were accessing uh, like a character on the text. But we're actually doing it on the hash. And then we pass in... The name of the bracket we want to affect so one cool thing is we could have like up here how we had a symbol if we had like message symbol equals symbol so now we have a variable that we're that's just like a symbol we could actually pass that in and it'll use this symbol or wait no this shouldn't be symbol this should have been message symbol should have been at the name of this key which is just message and then you'll see when we run the code our message to YouTube because it grabbed out that message which was originally defined up here but we're using a variable to access it so it's kind of cool and then if we also if we didn't want to do that we just want to access like more text to do more text symbol and access that key if you read in the code oh it looks like I broke something did I really no, it's always glitching. Okay, look, so running the code, we got our more text. And I think we can also access it as a string instead of a symbol. If we run the code, uh, hmm, actually, no. I don't think we can do string. I guess you need symbol since we defined as symbol. But. There's kind of a funny thing where you can define it as a string too. And then maybe this would work. Uh, actually, no, it still doesn't work. So I guess we were right the first time. You just have to access it as a symbol with this syntax. So it's kind of interesting. So then I want to talk about numbers. So numbers is a different type of data which could either be whole numbers, so integers, or it could be floating numbers, which just means it has a decimal. So that might be something like prices, where you have like the, the cents included on the price. Or more complex things, like in programming, you're always you know, maybe taking input from physical devices that use calculations. Like think about scientific data where there is decimals and a lot of more information. So that's why we have two types. We have integers and we also have decimals. Now you can, for longer numbers, you can actually use underscores to separate the zeros and that'll still work. Or you could just, you know, write it all out, but it just gets harder to distinguish. Let's say like one million is one. That's one million. If we're gonna put that out. Uh, let's go and rerun the code. And yeah, we get one million. And it doesn't even when we print it, it doesn't include the underscores. But we're allowed to use to do that just to distinguish the zeros. As a developer, it's kind of easier. Right, so you can have numbers, you can also have decimals.
The next type of data I want to talk about is booleans. So booleans in Ruby is just either true or false. So usually we use this uh, just for like different pieces of data where you need to know if something's either true or false. So in a web app, this might be stuff like preferences, like maybe for notifications. So like notifications on could be true or false for a user. And then when we're checking, when we're going to like send a notification, we would check like is the notifications on? And then if it's on, then we send the notification. So I guess let's just print this. Else, like we don't. So that's a pretty common use case in a in a web app where you'd have something like this, and then you just use this countless other times to to check if something's true or false, even in your code, like to to do conditions too. Because uh, there's there's always a point in your code where you want to do something if a boolean's true, or like don't do it if it's false. Uh, it could be anything. But if we go and run the code, uh, we see because notifications was on, then we're sending a notification. But if we set it to off, so we set it, well, I'm saying on or off, but really that just comes back to true or false, because those are the two types of booleans. And if we run the code again, well, now that it's off, it should actually say don't send a notification, because the boolean was false. So the last type of data that I'm really gonna cover is nil. So nil is a type of data. And in Ruby, that's usually like when something isn't defined, it'll return nil. So yeah, like this is, or actually no. <laughs> this is just usually something that people like return in different libraries. And in, instead of raising an error, they might return nil. But if there was no variable, like let's say if we just try to put um, no variable, see this is going to cause an error because there's no variable defined. So if we run the code, uh, we'll see it triggers an error and it says undefined local variable or method, no variable, right? But if no variable was set to nil, that's basically an alternative where it doesn't exist. Like there's no data, but it's just returning nil. If we run the code, uh, see, there's just nothing. It's nil. I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you just learn the different types of data in Ruby. There's not very many, and it's just good to like understand it and go over it, and keep practicing. So that's why I recommend you just go into your computer, create new Ruby files, either that or just go into the terminal and open up a Ruby console. So that's easy enough. If you already have Ruby installed, just go to any terminal, type in IRB, and then you're right inside of Ruby, and you can do anything, like any of the same stuff that we're, we've been doing. Like setting a variable to a string, and then you could just mess with this a lot more and actually execute code. And then another cool thing is, you see how I clicked dot, and now it's giving me all the different methods. It's kind of like listing them out. So if I wanted some ideas for stuff to do, I could just kind of like look inside of here. I don't really know how to interact with it. There's probably a, a key command to be able to click on a, a one, but I think it's mostly just like to give you ideas. Like what does slice do? I don't even know. Okay, slice uh, expects the uh, arguments. But you see, it's just kind of cool. You can mess with it, experiment, and learn more just by interacting with the console.